Eric Burgess here with Music Marketing TV, and today we're going to go over Zebra 2. I'm going to get you up and running so that you can quickly start making some patches. So to get us started, on our left side, we have our generators, sound processors, filters, distortions, things like that. On our right side, we have our modulators, LFOs, envelopes. We have additional modulators as well down here where we can send like sequences. And we also have an arpeggiator and a sequencer. We're not going to touch on all this stuff, but just know it exists. And let's now jump over to our patch here. So this is the initial patch. If you're not on it, go ahead and right click up here and go to init. And now you should be on a very similar thing. Your tab may be different. No big deal. So we have our first oscillator. And right now that's going out our first channel. So our sound generators get loaded in these boxes over here. Now we notice there are four volume knobs and each volume knob can basically have a separate patch on it uh, or a different layer. So if I come in here, I could load up like oscillator two and oscillator three. These are all on one layer. I could go ahead and load up like them on different layers if I wanted, just drag them over. You can have them all on the same layer. Like you can get pretty, pretty interesting, pretty fast. Right now they're all in the same layer. I could have them on different layers, double click to bypass. And you can right click and select active to turn it back on. You see they've also popped up here. And these oscillators are like crazy mega ultra powerful oscillators. They've got like effects for oscillators, like spe special oscillator effects. They've got their own mixer. It's just ridiculous what we've got in here. Uh, they also have a different stack mode and this can be really, really cool. But we're gonna keep it basic for now and just sort of leave things as they are. Now, Let's go ahead and turn these off and just give a quick look at the oscillator a little bit more because they have all these different modes. So these are controls up here for sure that can change the sound, but the meat of it's down here in the waveform mode. So we have these different waveform modes that each do their own thing. We're only gonna cover the morph mode for now. And this is basically just a wavetable. So I can click and add points down here and make a wavetable. And let's say I want to start here and modulate to a saw wave. So I've selected this frame. You can tell because it's orange. I'm going to right click on frame 16 and select morph. And now it has been morphed. And as I move through the wave, as you can see with the wave knob, I get a cool, a cool waveform thing. Now let's say I want to modulate it. Super easy, barely an inconvenience. Just come over here and we see all these blank knobs. These are knobs that are modulation depth knobs. So if I move it to the right, I get positive modulation. And if I move it to the left, I get negative. That just means if it's positive, when my modulator is going up, the knob it's controlling will also go up. Let me show you. So let's grab an envelope. Let's grab an, let's grab an LFO. So we're going to go to an LFO. LFO 2. LFO 1 is already loaded. And we're just going to leave it be for now. We're just doing 2 sort of arbitrarily. And right now, it won't do anything because LFO2 has been given no control over the wave. See, same sound. We need to give it a depth. So I give it a positive depth. That just means when the LFO is going in a positive direction, it's going up, this will also turn the knob, the wave knob, up. So we're going to put it in the middle. That way, when it goes up, we hear it go up. And when it goes down, we hear it go down. We can hear it moving back and forth. Now, right now, it's on free mode, which is why it's uh, got a different sound every time we hit a key. You can hear it progressing. If you don't want that, you can set it to gate, and it will restart every single time we hit a note. So it's a much more consistent sound. We'll see that also with the filter. Now, I'm going to set this to none. And I really like how it gets rid of it and resets. Stuff like that is awesome. And so there's our oscillator. Now let's say I want to load up a filter. So, okay. I come in here. And there's a bunch of things in here. We have shapers, comb filters, all sorts of stuff. I'm going to load up a VCF, voltage-controlled filter. And put it in the same stack. Because filters don't make noise on their own. Now, when I click on things, they go to the top. Yours may not do that. I like this because when this is very long and I got a lot of stuff loaded, it's very nice to have this. Because if you look at this, 
everything appears or all, all of it. So this is a, kind of a useful thing to have. So if you right click on the background and go to selected on top, that makes it so that 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 works. So recommend turning that on. So again, right click on the background. That's how you get to it. So, okay, cool. Now that I have this set up, we're gonna go ahead and mess with our filter. So filter, oscillator one's going through the filter. We can move our cutoff. Now their filters are amazing. I mean, they're addicting to mess with. There's so many things in here. So you get the idea. Now, what I'd like to do is load up a second oscillator, maybe on a separate chain, but I wanna filter them both through the same filter. Maybe I've got some additional things here. Uh, FM is going on, something's going on over here. And I'd like this filter to FM both. I can change the input. If I right click, whoops, I double clicked, right click. I can change the input to input lane two. So there's like one, two, three, four, and that's what these refer to, or the same one that it's already on. But the disadvantage is now oscillator one isn't going out. It's, it's been taken out of the chain. That's a problem. So instead what I'll do is we have a module called the mix module. There's four of them. I'm gonna load up one of these. And the mix module has the main input and a side chain input, and it can mix between them. So it's, already, it's by default set in the middle. And I'm going to change side chain input to input two. And now I get both out. Let's say I don't wanna hear this one, so I can turn that one off. And now they're both going through the filter. There's two, there's one. And if I, now if I move my cutoff around, we go ahead and get some cool stuff going on here. So that's the mix, that's the VCF. Let's cover FM real fast. So let's go ahead and remove this. So you see, it's pretty straightforward. Like it's not terribly complicated. Uh, before we cover FM, we should cover the basic signal flow beyond what we've talked about. So this oscillator is coming, it's been loaded out and we've seen how to get to the various modulators and we see there's a ton of modulators in here. But there is these, these are mute buttons, by the way. So if I play notes, MIDI's coming in, but no noise. There are these buses. Where do these buses go? Well, they go to the global tab. So the global tab has this effects matrix. This is where you can load like distortions, reverbs, all, all kinds of awesome things. And right now this is going to the main bus. They all are. I could change it to go to bus one or two. And you see by default, these are off. So just be aware of that. You'll have to dial them in. And they work just like up here, only this is just like especially for effects. And so right now it's going out the main and then that's going out the master. But we could change this to example, go to bus one. And right now there's no noise because this has been turned off. We turn this on, we can hear it. So just so you're aware, there's some additional things. Now let's take a look at the FM. So they have a bunch of FM modules, FM operator one through four. If I load one up, and let's go ahead, let's mute this one and just hear this one. Let's uh, turn it on. Double click to reset values, by the way. Don't know if I've said that. It's a sine wave. Let's say we want to change it because it seems like there should be more waveforms, right? Well, there are, but they're not here. We have to go to its tab. So there's only one tab that's got all four of them in there. And you can click on them to change it. So, okay. That's cool. Now let's change oscillator one to a sine wave because I want to FM them both together. And let's say that I want the dry signal of this coming out, but I also want the FM coming out over here. Well, I'm just going to change the input of this guy to input one. So now we've got it set up in parallel. We'll unmute this. That's pretty cool. To get the FM, all we need to do is come to our FM operator and turn the knob up. Pretty nice, right? And that's without any additional effects. We already have like a nice low thing. So with this thing, I wanna make this a sine wave cause that's just classic, right? So I'm gonna show you the presets here cause those are pretty handy. So the presets right here, you click and you get this menu and you can select from here. I don't like this menu very much because you can click around here but then you have to close it after you're done clicking. It doesn't like auto close, which makes sense I usually prefer to grab right clicking and grabbing from in here. And I'm gonna go for sine tree because I want a sine wave. It changes the mode. We're just gonna take that for granted for right now. And now we have our classic FM. We 
could set this up, set this up, set this up to LFO, not LFO. Let's go for an envelope two. We'll give it a longer attack. And give it a mod depth. And maybe set that at the beginning. And there we go. We've got our FM going on. Let's go over a few more of the modules. Uh, but that's the general gist of the routing. Let's also get into the message abilities in here. So, okay, let's come over here. We have these comb filters and these are just the dang wildest, craziest things. I think I'm gonna stop with the modules after this too. The rest I'll let you mess with. We've got some distortion and wave folding, wave shaping, bunch of goodies. So we're gonna go to our comb filter one. And the reason I wanna show you this one is cause it's a little tricky if you don't know what the rules are. So while sitter one is coming in, going through comb filter one, Let's play a note. We don't get anything. And at first this was highly confusing. We just have to turn on the input. We have to turn it up. And right now it's not super interesting because if we're just giving it a sine wave and comb filters, you know, create crazy sequences of filters that look like a comb if you were to view it on a spectrogram. And so what we wanna do is we wanna take advantage of that. So we need more than just a sine wave coming in. So let's go back to our handy dandy preset menu and just choose something like the init preset. Let's just get a saw wave going. Now on our comb filter, we'll dial up the input and we can actually change the mode here to get some interesting things. I'm gonna take the damping up and the feedback up. Now we have a pre-fill thing and this can get pretty fun as well. So we can have a lot of fun with the comb filter. Let's uh, let's go ahead and toss a distortion in here. Let's go for hard a hard clipper. Let's, let's drive it. Let's drive it good and hard. And all right, cool. So let's do that. Let's also toss a filter in. What the heck? We have ring modulation. I mean, there's so much in here. Let's go for a filter though. Let's add an LFO to this. The LFO, in order for it to affect the cutoff, has to be added to the first knob. I initially did not know this. It's a bit of a strange thing to me, but yes, it must be the first knob. So check it out. If I add an LFO, let's use LFO one to this. There's no effect it has. Let's, so let's go ahead and add it to the next knob. And we can hear it doing its job. It's a very nice, subtle effect, but just so you know, yep, it's gotta be the first one. Uh, interesting thing. I think it's specific to the filter type. So let's go ahead, let's experiment with that for a quick sec. So we can hear that working. Let's add LFO 2. And we can hear it working. So it's a filter type thing. So I've just never put it on L the low pass format. So interesting deal there. So all right, we've got a cool sound coming. Let's go ahead and go to the effects matrix and mess with some stuff in there. So here's our effects matrix. Let's go ahead and load up a... Hmm, a reverb, what the heck? Let's bring the delay, bring the damping up. And where is the delay? The mix will probably dial back some. And do, 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 that's the pre-delay, delay range. Let's the cutoff up. It's got a sound to it, man, that is just epic. So we can actually change the way the voicing works in the global tab as well. So right now we're in poly mode. I'm gonna set it to legato. In fact, I'm gonna instead gonna go to re-trigger. Oh, my dog is active. If you have any questions about this, let me know. Subscribe and hit the bell icon for future videos and have a blessed day.